Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to have a quick look at KDE Neon 5.16. So this was just released. It actually wasn't on DistroWatch. In fact, they haven't had a release on DistroWatch on KDE uh, Neon for a while. Um, but uh, looking at uh, what types of things were new, what types of things we wanted to look into, uh, this one actually is is just released within the last week or so. And so I thought it'd be good, and I haven't done a video on KDE Neon for a while. So if you are unaware, this is, uh, according to their own FAQ, so don't yell at me at this, is it the official KDE distro? No, they work with many different distributions. Is it a distro? They even say not quite. So yes, we're going to call it a distro here. It will be under my distro review playlist, but technically they say it's not a distro. Why do they say that? Well, KDE is based on Ubuntu LTS, so whatever the latest LTS is, which in this case is Ubuntu 18.04. And the Neon, uh, the Neon build is basically a testing ground for all things cute. And so, or QT if you prefer. And so what the idea behind this is, is to have an always rolling latest version of everything QT, but everything else is going to be based on Ubuntu. And uh, that's actually what their, um, what their goal is, is basically as a testing ground for everything in the latest. And I'll tell you, this is one of the reasons why uh, KDE is, is so good, is because they have one such testing ground for people to uh, try out the various different things. Also, if you are looking to buy a computer that has uh, some version of Linux built on it, you can actually uh, get one of these. I don't know all the details, but... Um, they basically have this Slimbook information on there, which is a computer that is pre-built and will run very well with this. I don't know anything else about it, but uh, you can browse through the lists there if you are curious. So when you go over to your download page, you can get the user edition. This guy here should be stable enough to do basic production-y type stuff on, or you can do a variety of testing, the unstable and the developer's editions. So you can actually go ahead and do that. They have information on using an image writer. So if you are on Windows or on Mac and you want to experiment with this and have an extra USB laying around, they have instructions on how to do that. And that way you can test the distro out without messing up your installation. Click on over here. You can grab the, uh, there's the user and there's the current. Um, these guys, I'm not sure what the major difference is between these two, and I could not find the specific documentation. My guess is this one is probably more like a quote-unquote nightly build uh, versus this one is probably not going to roll quite as much. That's just my guess. Like I said, there's no other real documentation. You can see it's a 1.4 gigabyte download. And uh, with that being said, we are going to go ahead and uh, boot into the system here. So I've already installed this onto a virtual box and uh, I did not run specific updates. I did not change any settings or configurations. All I wanted to do is uh, get the guy installed, make sure it works. And then I looked at a couple of little things on here. Um, in fact, while this is booting up, I forgot I had one more screen to show you guys. So while that guy's booting up, uh, here's kind of what we are expecting to see uh, based on their release announcements. The biggest change, I think, is they did really change uh, and put some TLC in their notification center. So uh, they have a do not disturb mode. They're going to be grouping notifications now. So there's a lot of features and functions uh, in here they've added as far as the notification center. Um, a few other options, uh, mostly this distribution or, or this version rather is adding a lot of polish to the system. That's according to what they're saying here. Um, and so with that, um, uh, there's actually some changes to the network manager, uh, some changes to discover. So with that, let's go ahead and um, check this guy out. All right, so over here, this is our basic log screen. And so we're just going to come over here. Uh, let's see what's under other here. So this is if you want to go in under a uh, different username. Here's your list of users, uh, which there's only one. And we also have desktop sessions. So we can go regular Plasma or Plasma Wayland. I did not test out Plasma Wayland. Um, let's go ahead and boot into this guy. So you do have that option if you need to experiment with Wayland or whatever else. 
So here is our login. Now, this is probably my second favorite desktop environment across the world of GNU Linux. My favorite being Cinnamon. This one I really like. The only reason, like, the, the only real issue that I've ever had with this is um, I use Kodi a lot for doing my multimedia. And when I am using Kodi, um, you can change between a windowed version and kind of like a desktop environment version. In fact, if you have Kodi installed, you can boot your computer directly into the Kodi desktop environment. And when you're toggling between those two, I have found a lot of times on various Plasma builds, whether I was on Fedora or Debian or whatever else, it kind of gets hung up and causes a system crash in a way. Um, and so that's really the only major issue that I have encountered. The other thing is, I know this is a very popular view, but the file manager Dolphin, I'm not a huge fan of it. The great thing about Dolphin is it has more flexibility than most of your other file managers, but in a way for me, it just feels at times very clunky. Um, I might want to test this around a little bit just to kind of see if this guy is always going to, if, if it's, I want to see if they've improved it a little bit or not. All right, so you can see though, they have uh, the split, they have um, preview modes, here's your control settings, just so many different things in here. Now, one of the things about Plasma is this guy is just beautiful as far as how it looks. It has the flexibility to be flat modern UI or skeuomorphic UI, depending on which way you like. All right, so the first thing, let's go ahead and dive on into the system settings. And since our um, uh, since our notifications is really what they've dwelt on as being the most um, the most changed thing here, let's go ahead and have a look. So here is critical notifications. You can show or not show them in your do not disturb mode. Um, you can always keep critical notifications on top. Uh, low priority shows pop-ups. You can show them in history or not show them in history. Um, and then there's pop-up position. So you can actually pick where you want them to be. Let's see if we actually, I would like it if they actually had a, uh, a test. I don't think they have a test on there. So hide pop-up after. You can toggle the, the time settings over there. And here you can actually um, fine-tune your notification. So they're really bringing our notification panel um, back in line with how notifications are, are really moving in, um, uh, in every, every other world, every other area. Let's see if there's, where's our notifications here? Let's see if there is any. All right, so here's our notifications panel. And inside of this, here's where you can toggle your do not disturb mode. There's a button over here so you can toggle that guy on. Uh, you can see what we did have a discover notification uh, is telling us that there are some security updates. All right, so uh, other things inside of here. I like this uh, search feature up here. That's a nice feature. So uh, here's our look and feel. And of course you can go with your light theme or your dark theme. Of course, one of the great things about this is we have this get new look and feel over here where you can go online and grab a variety of different theme setups by default just by selecting them. Now I have noticed that occasionally they just don't seem to load right. Sometimes you need to restart the system. Sometimes they just work either way. Um, that's kind of what we have. That's well, that's still installing. Let's go ahead and have a look at the system. So, going to see our about system here. So you can see we're running 5.16, Qt version 5.12. Our kernel on this is 4.18, and you can see everything else about the system here. We'll go ahead and leave that over there. All right. So that says it's there. Now let's go ahead and apply this theme. Ooh, that's a cool theme. I like that. Yeah, I get some nice transparency, some blend of modern and transparent. So that's neat. Um, so you have that option there. Here's your workspace themes. We have colors, icons, things like that. So uh, you can see that there's a, a lot of different settings. This is uh, the number of settings is on one hand um, very good. On the other hand, some people suggest it's too many settings. And so eh, we'll kind of leave that to your own devices. 
Now, uh, again, if you are new to Plasma, this is kind of, uh, depending on which version um, you have, like what distro you're running, you will see a different default menu by default. Um, you'll see here that they do not have a lot of applications installed, but the idea here is that if you go to install an application, rather than grabbing the Qt applications from the Ubuntu repository, which would be normal in most Ubuntu distributions, this is actually going to pull them instead from the most up-to-date um, uh, most up-to-date uh, repositories from your uh, KDE uh, repos. So you can see here that this is uh, 419. So we're going to go ahead and install Kden Live because there's been some controversy about the latest Kden Live. I know uh, Total OS Today hates it. Uh, he'd like to take this uh, this new version of Kden Live in the in, in the trunk in the back of the caddy. Um, well, let's go ahead and install a few other applications here. Uh, there's K My Money. There's for personal financey type stuff. And so, you know, we can install a variety of different things. Here's several updates. Uh, I'm not going to run the major updates. I just want to get the these basic applications running here just to have a quick look at what those are going to look like. All right, now, while this is downloading, uh, again, if you are new to Plasma, one of the cool things about it is while this is the default menu on Neon here, there are actually a variety of different menu types you can choose from. And several of these, you can see this option here called Show Alternatives. And your Show Alternatives will give you a variety of different menus. So this is the application launcher. When I'm running Plasma, this is the one I like to use. I just like it has a, it has a different feel to it. And I kind of like that different feel. So if I wanted to switch to this basic application menu, now I get a menu that's a little bit more traditional. We have a basic search. We have a favorites and we can grab our other applications. And if you are a person that likes your full screen guys, we have the application dashboard, uh, which when you pull this guy up, you'll see that we have our main applications over here. We have our recent documents and then we can sort by our applications just by scrolling down here. We have a list of favorites and all of our power on power off over here and click anywhere in white space to make the thing go back down. So you have all of these options uh, for, for changing things. The other option that you have is you have widgets. So uh, in this version here, the hamburger menu for the widget is up in the upper corner. You can also access it kind of in the um, lower corner here to add widgets down here, or you can right click and add widgets to your panel over here. That's gonna pull up a sidebar for widgets. And then here are a variety of different widgets you can do. So again, um, we can grab a clock, drag it over onto our desktop. And now I can actually put this up top. Or I can move it to the bottom of the panel if I want to. And again, there are a variety of different clocks we can choose from. So we have an analog clock. We have a binary, our calendar, our digital clock, and a fuzzy clock. So we have a variety of different options you can do. And uh, you can drag these guys around. Um, it's got to, there you go. It's got to hold down your mouse button on it a little bit. And you can drag them wherever you want, including dropping them on your panel. Now, a brief word of warning. Once it is dropped on your panel, it uh, I have never seen them be able to come off of the panel. There you go. You can drag these guys around. Um, and that seems to still be the case today. You still can't seem to, oh, you can pull them off the panel now. That's cool. That's the first time I've actually seen those be able to come off the panel, which is good. That is so awesome, actually. Okay, here's our basic settings, and now we can drag things around. Now, if you have your widget set, you don't want to risk accidentally, um, accidentally uh, messing them up. You can actually come down and lock widgets, which you can do here. You can do it up here. And if you lock your widgets, then a few things will notice. You still have access to your hamburger menu up here. You do not have access to the panel edit menu on the bottom. You can still always access it by right clicking and you have to unlock the widgets. That's also going to lock your alternatives. So you can see I don't have my alternatives here anymore. So that's kind of the case there. I think I have, uh, looks like everything that I wanted to install is now installed. So let's go ahead and head on down to here. Let's look at the latest version of Kden Live. 
<clears throat> All right. So here is our latest version of Caden Live. And um, one of the issues that uh, some people had indicated is you can't seem to have the same video and audio on the same clip anymore. Some people really like that feature. Another is I don't believe you can still right click and add your transitions. You can still come up here and grab all your transitions. Um, I actually, when I'm, that for me is kind of a 50-50. I do right click and add transitions on the timeline a lot, but a lot of my more advanced editing, I'm always using my, my customs or my favorite lists. And so I don't know if that's going to affect me a lot in the long term. I think what I should try and do is try editing a few videos on this particular version. All right, so there's that. Let's also look at graphics. We also installed Krita. So we have Krita 4.2.1. This is actually on my list of applications to take another look at um, this year because when I had first looked at Krita, they did not handle text layers well. And that for me was kind of a, uh, that was kind of a, eh, not a big fan. So, um, I think they're kind of moving in the right direction, um, but still, so like if you were to drag these around, you, um, uh, you could resize them and it would kind of mess up a lot of what you're doing. Um, this is, I don't know, it still seems a little clunky to me, but it's definitely an improvement. So if you have a drawing tablet though, Krita is definitely the one you want to be using rather than GIMP. Um, if you're doing basic image manipulation, the type of stuff I usually do, do, writing book covers, doing thumbnails, things like that, I actually still kind of prefer GIMP, but I want to spend a little bit of time looking into that. So that is kind of in a nutshell, um, KDE 516. So is this a distribution you should install? Well, we're not going to actually have a lot of problems from a new user perspective. So if you know that you want KDE, particularly if you like some degree of rolling, but you want to keep a main, you know, maintain a solid core based operating system, it is a good logical choice. It is based on Ubuntu and, uh, but you all are always going to have the latest of the cute applications. And so for that reason, this is definitely one to look into. Now, if you already have a perfectly working distribution, hey, don't worry about it. This is a good one to look at later. If you uh, want to poke around under the hood of something, you know, whatever that happens to be. So do I like this distribution? I do. Um, is it going to be my absolute favorite? Mm, I don't know. Probably not. I think I might add this to the list of uh, distributions to run on my uh, one of my production systems for a little bit just to give it a, a little bit more advanced test. Uh, but anyway, I did want to take the time to highlight it. Let me know your thoughts about KDE Neon 516 in the comments down below.